Howdy folks! I have a project plan that involves gold and I'm going to need a detection method for detecting gold. And the method that I'm going to use is the stannous chloride method where you put a drop of stannous chloride and it should give you a reddish purplish sort of dark uh, precipitate. So I've never done it so I want to give it a try with some known material i.e. gold in solution to make sure it works and to make sure I'm familiar with how to use it. So I'd like to make a standard solution and in fact I, I think I'll make two of them. Uh, one of them I'm going to make uh, dissolve the gold with one method and this with uh, aqua regia and the, I'll also make another solution dissolving the gold in a chlorine solution and just see how those compare. And one of the things I'd like to look at is basically how uh, sensitive the test is and how low of a level I can detect. And I'm not looking to, to do anything very exact or anything. I just want to get a feel for what it is. So I was thinking of making some standard solutions that are about 25 mils in uh, volume and about 100 parts per million. According to one reference that I have, the sensitivity should be about I think one one thousandth milligram per milliliter, which works out to be a, a part per million. Uh, some other references online, I've seen them state something a little bit higher than that, more like four to uh, ten parts per million or something like that. But we'll we'll get a feel to see what we can what we can detect ourselves. I think the weak point of our measurement is going to be our scale. We're going to need such a small amount of material. Like I said, I'd like to make up some maybe 25 milliliters of standard solution which is actually 0 0.025 liters and I'm thinking of 100 milligrams per liter and just to convert the milligrams to grams there's a thousand milligrams per gram Yeah, we cancel out our units here. We come out grams. And that's going to be 0 0.0025 grams, grams of gold uh, in that 25 mils of solution. So my scale only goes to the hundredth place. So I think what I'm going to do is and I've done this before for something, is I'm going to weigh out actually a lot more than that. I'm going to weigh out 0 0.025, which should be in the capability of my scale. And I'll physically divide it up and take a tenth. Uh, I do have some placer gold. Somewhere around here from uh, panning in various places. I don't know if you can see that or not. But uh, I'll take some of the real fine stuff and weigh up 0 0.025 grams, and then I'll take a tenth of that. You know, I'll split it up physically. I'll count the grains and uh, see what we end up with. I separated the gold that I had into the larger pieces and the smaller fine flour sort of gold, which would be a little easier to divide after I weigh it. So we're going to go ahead and weigh it up. I did calibrate the scale here so that should be pretty accurate. Actually I can't weigh 0 0.025 so I'm going to weigh out 0 0.05. Okay that's 0 0.05 grams. So to get 0 0.0025 I'd have to take uh, 1 20th of it. I painstakingly divided up the little bit of material that I weighed out on the scale to get an even smaller amount. And like I said before, I know that my method here is a little bit suspect, but I just want to get the weight in, in the ballpark here just to have some idea what we're doing. But uh, let's take a look. I mean, it, it, was, it was just a tiny amount. Not sure if you can see this on the camera. As I mentioned, I'm going to try to use two different methods to dissolve the, the gold. Let's do the bleach first. I've heard anything from 
a ratio of uh, two parts of acid to one part bleach all the way up to four parts of acid to one part of bleach. So let's, let's split the difference and try three to one. So we'll add three parts of acid, uh, actually six mils, and to that we'll add two mils of bleach. There's two, four, and six mils of acid. Now we'll add two mils of bleach. And we'll stopper that up so it doesn't, uh, the chlorine doesn't get out. Now we'll try to dissolve some in aqua regia. And that's a ratio of 3 to 1 nitric, or 3 to 1 of uh, hydrochloric acid and nitric. So let's add uh, 3 mils of uh, nitric, or of, uh, hydrochloric. There's two, that's three, and we'll add one mil of nitric. And actually this one we're going to heat a little bit. We don't want to heat the chlorine, that'll drive the chlorine off, but we'll heat, heat the aqua regia a little bit. I just want to warm this up, I don't really want to get it too hot. I just want to speed up the reaction to dissolve here. And it looks like something's going on because the color of the solution is changing quite a bit. I still see a little bit of gold down there. So I'm going to just let this sit for a while. And I'll probably put a cork on that one too and give it a chance to dissolve and see how long that takes. I'll let both of these sit overnight, and then some even, and the gold uh, all dissolved. Actually, with the bleach, I added a couple more mils to make sure it dissolved, and this this went a lot slower. Uh, I did check the pH, but it was still plenty acidic enough to keep the free chlorine there to work on the gold. And it all dissolved, except there's a, a little speck in each one of these, which I think is just from dirt that was in with the gold. It doesn't look like it's gold. So I think we've got all the gold in the solution here. The one thing I'm going to do is uh, open this up in the fume hood and I'm going to heat it to drive to try to drive off some of the excess chlorine now that uh, we don't need it because need it the, the gold is dissolved. So. I'm going to dilute these down to 25 mils and that should give us a ballpark of about 100 parts per million gold in solution. So put them in a volumetric flask here. I want to make sure that I wash out the tube to make sure I get all the material, all the gold out. Wash down the funnel. I'm guessing that's 100 parts per million for the bleach. I'm going to add a little water first here so it's not adding quite so much acid to water, or water to acid. This should be another 100 parts per million from the aqua regia. And actually now that they're diluted down, they both look about the same. For the stannous chloride test, you want to make sure that your stannous chloride indicator solution isn't too old. I bought this a number of years ago, uh, at least a couple, and uh, there used to be a piece of tin on the bottom, and that has since dissolved and disappeared. And it also looks kind of milky did put some in a tube 
and it's definitely cloudy. So I'm guessing all the stannous tin is oxidized to stannic or something like that. So I went ahead and made a, a new bottle of indicator solution myself and it's really easy to do. I took about 15 mils of hydrochloric acid and I put in a, a fairly good sized piece of tin, enough that wouldn't uh, dissolve totally. And I even warmed it a little bit and I let as much of that dissolve as possible. I poured it off on, into this bottle and I put a little small piece of fresh tin in there to keep it fresh. So this should look, work really well for our test and it should give us that kind of purplish, darkish, grayish sort of uh, color that indicates gold. We're going to go and check each of these uh, solutions at full strength. So I'm going to put three or four, probably more like four drops of uh, the solution onto a spot plate. I got water to serve as a blank. This is the Aqua Regia. And there's the bleach. I'm going to pull you in a little closer when we add the Stannis Chloride. So this is the blank. That's the gold dissolved in the Aqua Regia. And that's the bleach. It looks like after it's sat a moment, it looks like we're getting a pretty good reaction with the material that was dissolved in Aqua Regia also. That's the blank, 100 parts per million aqua regia and 100 parts per million uh, bleach. They say that it's important to have fresh solution and uh, that's why I made, up, made some up. I actually have something here that is a number of years old. If I put that in uh, some of the material we're, we're not getting a reaction so it is important to have fresh indicator solution. I went ahead and diluted down our stock solution which was 100 parts per million I divided the I doubled up the water for a certain amount diluted it 50 50 to get a 50 part per million and some of this I diluted down 50 50 to get a 25 part per million and some of this I diluted down 50 50 to get 12 and a half parts per million so I have a little bit of solution in these upper tubes here and and this half is actually from the uh, aqua regia and this half is from the bleach and I did the same thing so I have a 50 part per million a 25 and a 12 and a half uh, it looked like the 100 part per million worked just fine in the spot plate but I wanted a little bit more solution so I don't end up diluting it with the with the indicator solution so let's go ahead and, and add a drop to each of these and see what we can see some drops to these last two see what we get. We got some good indications here especially at 50 part per million which is quite dark. Also at the 25 and definitely at the 12 and a half but it's getting lighter so that's that's pretty good. Uh, these are from the bleach uh, material and this is uh, 50, 25 and 12 and a half so let's let's compare the two. They're about the same. The aqua regia looks maybe slightly darker, but uh, actually the bleach seems to develop faster. So, whatever, we're getting a good indicator of gold. So, I'm going to go ahead and dilute down even further, see see how low we can go. I split things up to two test tube racks. Now, I have the material that was dissolved in aqua regia here, and the gold that was dissolved in the chlorine here. Uh, and I continued the dilutions down. So, we had the 50 parts per million divided in half to 25. Divided in half to twelve and a half, divided in half to six and a quarter, all the way down to three and an eighth parts per million. And, uh, we already added the indicator in the first three, and we need to in add the indicator in the last two. So I, I did the same thing in the second half there with the gold that was dissolved in the chlorine. So I'm going to add the drop of indicator. And yeah, let's see how low we can go. All right, I zoomed in a little closer. So this is the half with the aqua regia uh, that was used to dissolve the gold. And I also got a tube of plain water. So let's let's compare this to the six and a quarter parts per million. 
and uh, I guess you're going to have to take my word for it. I don't know if you can see it on the camera or not. The one on the left looks uh, just a tad darker to me. It looks like it has a, a bit of gray to it. So it looks like uh, we can see six and a quarter. And here's three and an eighth. And that one I can't really tell the difference. I mean, maybe a hair. Yeah, maybe a little bit, but it's it's certainly not easily detectable. All right, let's let's go over to the other side with the bleach. All right, comparing the six and a quarter. Yep, once again, I, I can see a slight color difference. I don't know if you can or not. Possibly on this one, but I... I boy, that would really be kind of subjective there. So, same with the other one. So, I think we reached the limit. Uh, we can't go down to the three and a half, but... All right. Well, that was pretty good, though. We did uh, see good results down to about, oh, I'd say about five parts per million. All right. Well, this worked out pretty well. We were able to make a gold solution via two different methods. One was with aqua regia, and the other method was with chlorine in the form of chlorine bleach. And they both dissolved the gold, and they both came up with uh, uh, similar results. The stannous chloride worked, and we were able to get some pretty good sensitivity. It was really easy at the higher levels, uh, down to uh, still was able to see something at six and a quarter parts per million, and the three and an eighth was pretty subjective. I wouldn't say you can, you know, I, I could tell if that was there or not, but six and a quarter was pretty good. So I'm thinking that we could, it would be good down to maybe five, definitely ten parts per million. And looking at the the color range here, this. This would be a good, uh, if you're going to run a lot of samples and wanted to get some solid numbers based on the color that you got, uh, this would be a good candidate to use my homemade colorimeter. Uh, there, I have a video on that, and you can actually calibrate it to some knowns like this, and then run a, an unknown, and it would look at the, the level of the color, and actually you can come up with a little more of an exact number. So, anyways, that's something to keep in mind. Uh, the other thing that we learned was that it's quite important to use the fresh stannous chloride. So the stuff that I had that was a couple years old didn't work. Uh, it was probably older than that. But the new stuff that I made, uh, as you saw earlier in the video, did work just fine. So, so that was good. So anyways, uh, I do have a project coming up that involves gold that uh, I'm kind of excited about. And uh, I think it, I think people might find it kind of interesting, but we'll we'll see how that comes out. And uh, so, anyways, uh, thanks for watching. I learned quite a bit, and I hope you did too. And uh, good luck with your own mineral collecting and uh, analytical work. Have a great day.